Hey there Dev Squad, Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Endless Runner tutorial series. In today's video we're going to be showing you how you can set up point scoring for your Endless Runner game. As of right now what we do have set up is some basic movement within our level. We're able to switch between the three lanes and we can run endlessly. However, as of right now, there's not really much of a point to that. And what I mean by that is that you're not scoring points, and that is what I'm going to be showing you how to do today. So every time you go over a tile, I am going to tell it to give the player one point. Now, what we're also going to be setting up is functionality for a point scoring multiplier later on that they're going to be able to adjust. Um, but the main thing is that every time you go over a tile, it's going to score a point, and we're also going to have that shown on the screen in the top right hand corner so the player can see it going up and up as they score those points. So the way we're going to do this then is, first of all, I am going to open up my third person game mode. And then within here, what I'm going to be doing is creating a variable which is actually going to store the number of points. So in the bottom left hand corner here, add a new variable and we're just going to give this the name current points. And then for the variable type, we are just going to set this to an integer. And then we're going to go ahead and hit compile. And then we're also going to make another variable and we are going to give this the name points multiplier. And with this, we're just going to compile this and set the default value to 1. So, let's start working on the functionality to get those points scored. And like I said, we are going to be giving the player 1 point every time they go over the tile. So, what we're going to do is go into our runner files, go to the blueprints folder and open up the master tile. And if you remember, we set up some functionality for when they hit an end trigger just before it deletes that tile. What we're going to do is we're going to use this and tell it to add a point from there so we don't have to set up any new functionality. So what we're going to do just before it destroys the actor, we're going to move that along, make some space just like that, and we're going to break this link. In between here, what we're going to do is cast to the third person game mode so that we can actually access the variable that we just created so we have access to the information. With the object wildcard, we're going to set this to get game mode. And then as third person game mode, what we're going to do is set current points. And what we're going to be doing with this is essentially just getting the value that we've got already. So as third person game mode, we are going to get current points. And then what we're going to do is we are going to add an integer to another integer. But what we want to do is get the points multiplier sort of added in there somehow so that we can use this for a little bit of extra functionality later on. So as third person game mode, you also want to get points multiplier, the other variable that we just created. And what we're going to do is drag out from points multiplier and do integer multiplied by integer. So this one here with the little star. And we're going to get points multiplier hooked up into the second input for B and then A is going to be 1. And then what we're going to do with this is we are then going to do integer plus integer. So essentially what we're doing is getting current points, so the number of points they've got already, and then adding 1 times the points multiplier. Now, if you guys don't want the points multiplier, you do not have to add this in. This is entirely up to you. But what we're going to be using this for is a pickup. So when you pick that pickup up, you're going to get twice as many points. So just take a look at my code, break it down a little bit, and you should be able to see exactly what we're doing a little bit better. So the points multiplier default value for that is currently 1. So if we're doing 1 times 1, 
it is just one. And then if we're adding the current points plus one, it's just going to be adding one onto your score. But if we have the points multiply equal to two for whatever reason, it is going to add two points instead of one. So go ahead and hit compile. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to run a quick print string from the set points so that we can see exactly how many points we've got. And once we know that that is working, we can actually work on adding that to the screen. So what we're going to do is drag out from the execution pin from set current points and print a string. For the in string, just hook this up to the return value from your set current points, hit compile, and then hit play within your runner level. And you can see in the top left hand corner, it is now showing us our points. And as we progress through the level, it is adding in those extra points. And one other thing that I do want to show you is if I go ahead and open up my third person game mode and set my points multiplier to something like 15 now and hit compile and hit play, it is going to add 15 points every single time as opposed to just one. So if you want to change the number of points that they're going to be getting later on, on the fly, so something that you can access in code, this points multiplier is the way that you're going to do this. So let's show you how you can get your points displayed on the screen properly now because you don't want to be doing it with a print string. So what we're going to be doing is inside of your runner files and within the blueprints, we are going to right click and create a widget blueprint. And this widget blueprint is going to be for the heads up display. And on here, we can add a, a dynamic text element, which is going to show your points. So like I said, in the content browser, right click, go to user interface and add a widget blueprint. Give this the name runner HUD, just like that. And then just double click it to open it up. And then with my points, I'm going to put this in the top right hand corner of the screen. So within your palette in the top left, go and grab a text element, drag it to the top right. And then within here, I'm going to get a nice big font. So in the details panel, expand my font under appearance, make it nice and big. And I'm just going to set the default text to 000, just like that. And now for the bit where we actually make it dynamic. You might also want to make sure you anchor that to the top right hand corner so it stays there. But now for the bit that makes it dynamic. If we go to our content, the content is what it's going to display. What you can do is create a binding within here that is going to bind it to a variable. And that way it's going to update live dynamically and get that information, get the content from a variable that we've created already. And in our case, that is going to be our current points. So click bind and then create a binding. And then with this binding, we're going to make some space. And from the execution pin of the get text, we are going to cast to the third person game mode so that we can reference and access the information from that variable we created. Object wildcard, once again, that should be get game mode. And then as third person game mode, what you're going to do from here is simply get current points and then hook this up to the return value over here. Now, what this is going to do is convert the integer value to a string, string being text, integer being a number. You've got a couple of settings in here um, that you might want to play around with, such as minimum integral digits, which is the amount of minimum digits that should be in there. For me, I'm going to set this to four and then I'm just going to compile this. And what we can do now then is get this widget blueprint that we've created displayed on the screen so they can see that score. The way that we're going to do this is by going into our character blueprint. So close all of that down, go to your third person BP folder, go to blueprints and open up your third person character. Within here, I'm going to find 
myself some space and then right click and use the begin play node to create a widget with the widget class being the one we've just created which is runner HUD and we are just going to grab the return value and add that to the viewport and line it up just like that and now if we hit compile hit play you can see I have now got my score up in the top right hand corner and every time I'm going over these tiles it is increasing my score now what you will notice is the points have sort of gone off the screen a little bit because of the way I have placed them and also the way it's converting the integer to a string it's using grouping which is basically just adding a comma we don't want that so what we're going to do is go back to our runner files blueprints folder and open up our runner HUD and then if you remember I said the minimum number of digits was four so within my default text I'm going to add a fourth zero and make sure I add space for that and drop it in the top right hand corner. I need to access that binding that we've just created here and you can see at the moment that is called get text underscore zero. Press the little magnifying glass to go to this function and then under here you have got use grouping. If you don't want the comma uncheck that and you will no longer have it. Compile it press play and now you can see our score is going up in the top right hand corner and you can see the player is now able to collect points. Now there is a still a whole bunch more that we need to do in terms of a heads up display but that is going to be something we'll be working on as we go throughout the series. But anyway guys that is everything for today's episode. Once again guys thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep curating, your boy Virtus signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.